amazing animal journeys. Hi, Henry. Doing a little globe trotting? Uh-huh. Well, you're not alone. All over the globe, animals have to keep on the move, both day and night. This globe trotting is hard work. I need a cool drink and a rest. Sun, sea, sand, and low-flying parrots. Hey! Animals don't go on journeys to get away from it all. They go for important reasons, to find food and water, or to have babies. Henry, are you okay? I think so. Good. Uh, oh. <laughs> Henry, be careful. Careful? I want to live a little. Travel the seven seas, a lizard in every port. You know, lizards just want to have fun. Well, not everyone leads the life of lizardly leisure you do. Many animals have no choice but to travel. Excuse me. He's going nowhere fast. She, Henry. This is a female green turtle. Males never come ashore. She's just finished laying her eggs on this sandy beach. So, that doesn't sound like much of a journey. She's had to swim thousands of miles to do it. Turtles lay their eggs on the same beach where they were born, even if it means swimming for weeks and weeks to get there. Why? No one really knows. While some animals travel in water, many others go on amazing journeys to find it. All animals need water to stay alive. Hey guys, get a straw. That's more like it. Elephants drink more than 20 gallons of water a day. But some animals can't make the journey to the water, so the water has to come to them. This sand grouse has babies back home who need to drink, but they're up to 50 miles away. Dad goes off and dunks himself in the pool, then flies back home with his feathers full of water drops. He carries about a cup full of water on each trip. So the babies in the desert get all the water they need by drinking from Dad's chest feathers. Sand grouse are one of the very few birds in the world that do this. Like a feathery popsicle, right, pop? But when water runs out, some animals set out on even longer journeys. These wildebeest, or gnus, are on a never-ending hunt for food and water, following the precious rains as they sweep across the plains. How do they know where to go? The wildebeest don't need to see rain. They can smell it from miles away. Well, do I take the faucet for granted? to decide what to take. Huh? I wonder what animals take on their journeys. They don't have luggage. It would slow them down. Yeah, but I've got to be prepared for everything. Who knows what I'm going to meet on my travels? That's true. You just may meet your perfect dream gull. Very funny. I'm off to an island of dreams where I'll drink cool coconut milkshakes all day and not have a care in the world. Earth to Henry, get real. Not all journeys are safe. In fact, some places have dangerous predators, while others have... Ooh, killer rabbits! Are you sure? <laughs> no, but I know some animal journeys are a matter of life and death. Here are the wildebeest again, still traveling. Hey, I know that face. It's a cheetah. Those wildebeests better watch out! Each place the wildebeest go is the home of someone who wants to eat them. In this case, it's the cheetah, the fastest sprinter in the world. They can hit 65 miles an hour. That's amazing! How will the beast get away? There's safety in numbers, and the wildebeest just keep moving on, following the reins. But some animals don't need to make a journey. They just wait for food to travel to them. To the bat cave! Oh, why do some people hate bats? I don't know, but here's someone who has a real taste for them. A snake! A python, Henry, and a hungry one at that. This cave in Australia is home to over half a million bats. Wow! 
owl who go on a nightly journey to find food. If the snake stays still, the bats just think he's a piece of rock or a branch. Oh, until it's too late. You're catching on, Henry. That was the last journey for one bat. The python can swallow it whole. Every time the bats fly in or out of the cave, they risk their lives. Many other animals make dangerous journeys to find food. This mouse doesn't look like it's taking any chances, except for maybe pricking its feet. Right. The cactus mouse cleverly travels through the cactus spines, which protect it as it hunts for seeds to eat. Protect it from who? From him, a rattlesnake. How can he see a little guy like this? I thought snakes had bad eyesight. That's true. It can't see well with its eyes. But special heat-sensitive organs in the rattlesnake's head can sense where the mouse is. What's keeping this little guy safe on its journey for food is the cactus spines. The snake doesn't want to tangle with them. I guess the mouse made his point. Yes, he did. The snake realizes its prey is well protected, safe among the sharp prickles. Hey, Henry, do you know where you're going? Wherever I want. But do you know where you are? I'm not at liberty to say. In fact, uh, I'm not sure. Mm, um, mm, mm, mm. To tell you the truth, uh, I, I think, um, um, well, uh, uh, I'm lost. I have no idea where I am. But my instincts tell me it's time for lunch. When in doubt, eat. It's bad enough being lost. At least I don't have to be hungry and lost. What's he want? You, Henry. Exit stage left. Good instinct, Henry. But this South American caiman hunts bigger game than you. Bigger game? Like the gnu? Yep. And they're still moving on, looking for food. But this hungry crocodile is waiting for them, and it likes GNU. That's not good GNUs. Oh, the GNUs are desperate for a drink of water after their long journey. Now the crocodile knows they're vulnerable at the water's edge, so that's where he waits. Look out! Hey, look, they're running away. I warned them in time. That crocodile's still hungry, though. Uh-oh. The wildebeest have to drink or they'll die. And they need the fresh grass that's across the river. Do the canoes have canoes? I don't know. Gazutite. These stragglers have still got to get past the crocs. Their dangerous journey is far from over. Fortunately, other animals have an easier time finding food. This elephant in Southeast Asia doesn't have to travel far at all. Why do they carry their trunks everywhere? <laughs> Henry, please. This gibbon probably thinks the elephant is lucky. Why? Because almost every bit of vegetation in this jungle is food for an elephant. Wow, wall-to-wall -wall salad bar. What do the gibbons eat? Fruit from the trees, mostly. But they've soon eaten all the fruit from one area, so they need to move on to new parts of the forest. Hey, is this an Olympic sport? Whee! I give him a 10! 
Their arms are twice as long as their body, and they've got hands like hooks to help them make leaps from tree to tree. They cross huge areas of the jungle canopy in their search for food. It's playtime on the monkey bars, and recess never ends. There's no greater acrobat in the animal world than the gibbon, swinging through the trees. And they don't just swing, they sing too. That's how they communicate. Swinging singers! Amazing! A great deal of animal journeying goes on here in the Amazon. Really? That's amazing! No, that's the Amazon, the greatest river in the world, with more different kinds of fish living in it than any other river. These fish, called arowana, are known by local people as water monkeys. Although they spend a lot of time on the move, their journey to look for food is very short. Why do they call them monkeys? You'll see. I can't see much to eat in this river. Just watch closely, Henry. Wow! Flying fish! No, jumping fish. Oh, he's one lucky spider. Not for long. Here we go again. Let's watch the instant replay. The arowana fish bends its body and suddenly leaps out of the water like an uncoiling spring to grab its insect prey. Just when you thought it was safe to sit on a leaf. Penguins are famous for their great journeys. Wow! Look at those guys in tuxedos. They must be traveling luxury class. Wrong. These are guys and gals. They're Magellanic penguins about to make a long uphill journey to feed their young. Isn't he a cutie? Actually, he's acutely hungry. Mm, it looks like the adult's regurgulating. You mean regurgitating, Henry. Excuse me? The adult has swallowed lots of squid and cuttlefish in the sea, and now it pushes them back up out of its stomach and into the mouths of the little ones so they can eat. Even the gull wants some. Ooh, amazing. Then the whole journey starts over again. You mean back to the sea? Right, then back up to the kids again, then back down to the sea. Magellanic penguins swim over 1,500 miles each year to get back to these beaches in Patagonia at the very tip of South America. That sea looks really cold. That water is about 55 degrees Fahrenheit, over 40 degrees colder than the penguin's body temperature. Brrr. Penguin, party of 10,000. Your table is ready. Dinner is served.